Welcome to the <laughs> NEPA Scene Podcast. We're coming to you live from Cole Creative in downtown Wilkes-Barre. I'm Rich Howells. I'm the founder and editor of NEPA Scene. I'm John Popko from Time Shamrock Communications with Alt-921, Rock 107, and ESPN Radio. And I am Brittany Boot, and I'm the owner of Boot Photography Studio. And we are here with Jess Miomi, who is a graphic designer, a, uh, a writer, editor uh, of uh, Ruth Lazine. Uh, she is also a, a community organizer of sorts <laughs> who uh, does all kinds of events in the area, the Scranton Zine Fest, uh, the uh, Girls' Night Open Mic, and uh, then the upcoming uh, Bad Trip uh, Psychedelic Show, which is what we're really here to talk about today. So. Uh, uh, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, first up, we're gonna we're gonna drink some beer before we get into the that's conversation. That's why I'm here, Rich. It's, I know that's why <laughs> that's you're the here. The only reason I'm here, just for the free, the just free for beer. the just for the beer. <laughs> that's it. I'm here for the beer, <laughs> which is is brought to you by Beer Boys and Wilkes Bear. So thank you guys for for sponsoring us. Uh, one of the only ones in the area that have these awesome crawlers that you can get. Uh, it's kind of like a growler, but uh, it's it's. Uh, put up in a can so it's a little bit uh you know it'll stay fresh for longer and this week we have uh three different blueberry beers i guess that's the theme today before uh, summer ends we should get in all our uh blueberry fruit beers uh one of them is uh sea dog blueberry wheat ale which is by uh sea dog brewing in uh, portland maine and uh, we have becky blueberry cider which is by the uh, platform beer company in cleveland ohio uh, that one is, is actually new to the area, so that, that's going to be uh, uh, a little different, I think. Um, Beer Boys is one of the only places you can get it. And uh, the last one, I think, has the best name, Blueberry Belch by uh, Fegley's Brew Works in Allentown. So that one's more of a, a local beer. Um, so let's, uh, let's start with the, uh, the, the platform one. That's uh, what I have. Becky, Becky uh, Blueberry Cider. Yeah. Let's give that one a shot. Now, if you have any uh, questions or comments <laughs> for <laughs> our guests tonight, uh, please leave red. them down below in the comments, and uh, we'll get to those in a little bit. We'll make sure to uh, any any shout outs you want to give, any bands you want to plug uh, that are coming up on this show. Lots and lots to talk about tonight, so uh, be sure to uh, to join our conversation. Cider. Cider. It's a cool color. It is a cool color, Chris. Yeah. That's the first thing I noticed. Gerard, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. You're welcome. Cheers. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I like That's it. That's so funny and awkward. <laughs> 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 Should have counted it down. Like, let us all sip now. Yeah. Now we sip. <laughs> Pay attention while we sip. <laughs> you know, you all have to give props to. We all for do that. it in unison. Uh, uh, Matt Dapkins, who does uh, massive beer reviews uh, every Friday oh, on the site, guy. you see his stuff. He has a YouTube channel, which I mean, he puts out uh, uh, at least a new review a day. It's ridiculous how much he does. But he like gets super into it. He like sniffs the beer, like he like well, puts about, his his entire yeah. face into it and like breathes it in, and then he's able to tell you that everything that's in it just by smelling it. And then he just like he mind. just gets super into that. That's no gross. shame. No, it doesn't matter if people yell at him in the comments or whatever. It's just he's 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 really awesome at that. I got to give him. Props. It's his form. That's a pro. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's he's a pro. I mean, we're we're amateurs, yeah. <laughs> if that. <laughs> Are we below that? Is there something below that? <laughs> yeah. This is good though. I'm not it's, a cider guy. It's very tart. I'm not a cider person either, and it is very good. Yeah, I like to drink cider on yes. ice. Yeah. It's it's crisp. It's Which tart. Is unusual, I guess. I love it. Yeah. Was this was this the one from Allentown or was that the last one? No, this Back? is this is the one from uh, from Portland, I think. Uh, uh, Portland, Maine. No, that's... no, that's that's the second one. Uh, Cleveland, Ohio. That's that's a platform beer. So this one is is relatively new to the area. It hasn't been really distributed here. I like before. blueberry anything. So where would you get something like this? Beer boys. Beer boys. Beer boys. And where are they located? <laughs> a block Around the away. corner. Yeah, they a are. Block a block away. away. Yeah. yeah. So if you're in downtown Wilkes Barre, you should definitely stop. North over. Washington Street in Wilkes Barre. Yeah. yeah, we were just there uh, last, last week. Yeah. Well, back today. Mm -hmm. Are they like the only ones I have it though? That's what I mean. One of the first. Yeah. I, I don't know yeah. anyone else who has it. So. Yeah. Beer boys. <laughs> 
Our, we also want to give a, a shout out to uh, the Keys in downtown Scranton, one of our other sponsors. Uh, this Thursday is their weekly open mic. Uh, this Friday they have an EP release show with uh, Coal Miner Canary. Uh, it's a, a, a new band by uh, David Haig. And uh, Dennis Condusta and uh, Marcus A.D. will be opening the show. Uh, we just featured him in NEPA Music Notes, uh, our new uh, music column. So if you, you, you want to know more about that, uh, check that out. And on Saturday, uh, members of both E57 and Days in Transit uh, are celebrating their birthdays uh, with a show at, uh, at the Keys. Uh, so be sure to check that out. And uh, the Kirby Center, which is uh, right next door here, it has uh, Taj Mo uh, coming up uh, tomorrow on August 10th, which uh, we'll have photos from that. And we have a ton of photos from uh, the last couple of shows that they've done as well. Uh, Gene Ween, uh, was the other one? D uh, Dweezil Zappa, a uh, whole bunch of uh, stuff on the site now. Uh, Duke Ellington Orchestra is on Saturday, August 12th. And uh, Donnie and Marie is on August 24th. And Greta Van Fleet, which is sold out, is on uh, August 25th. All right, so Donnie now, and Marie. yeah, Donnie and Marie, Are they like in their seventies, they're now? still going. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! I, I I mean that that's that's like a show like like our parents would really be into. You know, I can't tell you the last time that I saw them in anything, but uh, you know, if okay. you ask my mom, it's like you know. I think they've been on infomercials. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she looks great. Yeah, yeah, they they, they for both, like being that they old. They both they both look really good. I don't know, know what he looks like yeah. these days. I don't know if they've had any, you know, plastic surgery. She's a little firecracker. Yeah. It's either like you go straight to like yogurt commercials or Dancing with the Stars, and you just like know you're right. It's over. Right. <laughs> exactly. Do, or do casino shows like, like yep. all the yep, time. That's what you know, the casino circuit. So it's cool that they're doing something different. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that they're they're still they're still out there doing it. In the biz. Yeah. So what have you been up to lately? <laughs> um. Well, uh, I guess planning this show, this psychedelic show, for uh, a little bit now. Um, and there's been a few psychedelic shows that have been happening in the area. So and a lot of bands have been, um, you know, influenced by psychedelic music. And I think it's cool to just give them a platform to perform at and just continuously, like, provide things that the community can go to, really. Well, it's it's uh, the fact that you can find that many bands that can fit into that, you know, in the the general area. I think says something about like is is that something that's kind of up and coming? Do you think in the area that sound? You know? Yeah, I mean, I f I feel like a few different bands like aren't strictly that, but they experiment with that sound. Mm -hmm. um, like just in Wilkesbury, there was the there was a psych fest there. Um, a lot of great bands played there, and some of them from there are going to be playing at this one. Um, but I, I wanted to make mine more like a, I guess like a, a Woodstock kind of feel, I guess, because I wanted it to be outside. Right. Um, and I wanted people to just kind of be able to walk by and if they see it, just stop in and listen. Right. Which is good because it's right on Courthouse Square, uh, right where the, the bands played last, the last couple of years at the Arts on the Square. So for anybody who's been to that before, you know, it's the same general area. Yeah, and that's like a, a place I've never tried to host anything before, really. I, I really yeah. did always want to get, like, the, the square to do, like, Zine Fest or something like that. But, like, right. I just, like, really couldn't um, charge my vendors that much money for, like, a <laughs> space. Like, um, But luckily, um, just was able to work with the county and they gave me that date and uh everything really worked out so i'm hoping that a lot of people come out hmm. and listen that, that's I, I was i was curious because usually you see uh you know county events and things like that they're kind of more mainstream kind of not as you know Groovy. on the edge or a little bit different uh you know they're 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 you know mostly family friendly kind of stuff not that this isn't family <laughs> friendly but you know something that uh you know is very is very f for that sort of audience so it's interesting that the, it, like w was it a a pain to explain that to them to to get them to agree to doing this or to letting you do it i mean i really just explained that it was going to be a show yeah and, um, and they were they were good with that and um <laughs> they were just like uh that little it's, i mean like it's kind of a stage it kind of looks like just steps with just like right. a thing over it um yeah and um I think that they were just like happy about it. I think they want people to utilize it really, and mm. I just think that people either like don't know or they don't really know who to ask or, um, you know, 
they kind of try to search for like indoors venues because you know like weather's going to be a factor and stuff and hopefully it's sunny sure. on saturday yeah. but um uh yeah i think those are some of the reasons that maybe it just doesn't cross somebody's mind to do right. it that way and uh but now it might but now it might. Yeah, that's so true. So that's a good thing. So maybe it, maybe it'll spur. That's like half the battle of doing events. things like that is just making people realize that you can do them. Yeah. Right. You know, and then yeah. like they go to events yeah. and then it's like, oh, okay, like this could happen all the time now. You know, so it just kind of inspires other people to do stuff. Right. I tell people that all the time. I'm just like, I swear, like. 80% of the time I'm jumping in the dark. It's all trial and error, really. Like, right. I'm not an expert at this kind of thing at all. I think anybody can do it. I think people are just like, I don't know what the first step is. I don't know who to talk to. I And, right. like, even to get this spot, I, like, went through, like, five different people just to get an yeah. answer, you know? But, I mean, like, that's, that's okay. It's just, like, kind of the nature of the beast. You just have to go through the channels to reach whoever you need to reach. Right. But um, it's it's just like that's just the logistical work on that end to make something happen, really. But I think anybody could do it, really. And I, and I think that that brings up a, a good point because I think a lot of people complain that there's nothing to do in the area, or they they say that you can't do anything. Like they act like like Scranton or Wilkes Barre or Northeast PA is some sort of oppressive force yeah. that comes down on creative like the end people of a video game and where you just keep running into the wall. Them, you know, yeah, they they act like the area <laughs> is destroying me, is making me not a being constant able to cloud. Be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's just it's simply not the case. Yeah, it's you a just have to actually going out and, and doing it. Execute your ideas. Right. And I think that um like venue owners are most of them are more than willing to work with you and they want they want events to happen at their venues you know they sure. I, I think that they're really grateful when somebody comes forward with an idea and uh, I'm, I'm grateful to tons of owners uh, in Booksbury and Scranton that are willing to just you know kind of run with my crazy ideas <laughs> and like anybody else's and like some sometimes they're just yeah, they're not entirely sure what's going to uh, happen, but um, I think that like they're excited about the prospects and right. um, they when they see it's a great turnout and then they they kind of they like want to work with you again and then more people come back. So sure, I think it's just like all about taking that first step and not being afraid to like just you know ask who the owner is or you know if it's like a public space like talk to someone who you know works for Nag Park or whatever mm. and just try to get out there and just make some phone calls <laughs> make some emails you know just go for it because um, I don't think anything is stopping anybody from trying it like I'm just right. I'm no one special I'm just like some girl that lives in West Side. I don't really like you know there's no like I didn't go to school for this kind of thing I'm just like yeah I'm gonna call someone to make this happen That's right it. And that's that's another thing you hear too is that you know oh you have to be connected to get something done you know and I don't think that's the case either I think you you have to make connections yeah. you have to reach out to people yeah they're not gonna like drop from the sky like I right, like right. you know I meet tons of different people at events you can't be afraid to talk to anybody <clears throat> like no matter if you like feel awkward about it or not like. You know, there's always going to be that fear that I'm like, oh, you know, they're never going to go for this <laughs> or like they're not going to want to talk to me or whatever. But yeah. like, you know, you win some, you lose some, whatever, you know, I've, sure. I've been in certain cases where they were just like, you know, no, you can't do that. Like I specifically like I, I was kind of like for a while, I was just like, I'm doing so many events up at like Nayog, like I'm going to try McDade, you know, Cause it's, like, <laughs> it's like right by my house. And like, right. I remember them saying like, yeah, we don't do that here. And I was like, <laughs> I'm like, but it's just like a huge park thing. Like, don't you want people to go to it? And I'm then right. I and then I'm thinking like, what do you guys do in your office? Yeah. Like, what do you what do you do it like just hiring people to cut the grass and like <laughs> putting some weddings up there and stuff and I'm just like but like I don't know well, but I get it so that's why I guess like I always go to like Neog I've tried to like go to like other like parks up in Wilkesbury too and hmm. um, you'll find that people don't want to do more than like their day to day <laughs> like right. you know that's what you, that's when you run into like they don't want to make that phone call for you or like. It, that's when you run into like that's the only really like speed bumps in the road, you know. Right es the especially beginning. if you're pa if you're paying their paycheck because you know right. taxpayers pay for people who work the in the city, the county, and everything department. else. And um, I think having having uh, you know covered city government and county government over the years as a reporter, you find out very quickly who cares about their job and who doesn't give a shit. Right. <laughs> and they're are plenty of people who just they want to do the the nine to five and get out they don't want to do one lick of things extra they don't want to 
add anything onto their plate right. that they already have. Even if it's just a like simple that. phone call or a simple like signing like a permission sure. form or you know, it's a yeah. something that simple. Exactly. I mean, but sometimes like it just takes also meeting them in person to like I yeah. mean like with that like a McDay thing, like I just gave them a phone call but like, you know, maybe something would have worked out differently if I went in person to explain something too. Like sometimes you have to go like that extra step. Right. Um, I mean, like, depending on, like, where you really, really want to have it, like, you know, if uh, a park is just a park to you and it doesn't matter, like, you know, for whatever I had to do at that time, like, Naya could have easily worked. I just kind of wanted to switch it up. But, um, right. you know, I think that just saying, like, hey, could we just, like, talk in person about something, then I think that maybe that would have worked out maybe a little bit differently. Right, yeah, you get a little more done because then they can't ignore you. Yeah. You know, a phone call or an email, they could just not return it. You know, right. But uh, mm -hmm. something like that. I'm sure the event matters, too, because, like, you say, like, psychedelic stuff, people are going to immediately think drugs and <laughs> right. hippies and hula hoops. And, yeah. So I'm sure that's a hurdle. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Is that, is that, no, is that that's, not accurate? That's what I think the like average person would naturally think. Right. Just the assumptions. So I have a funny, really funny, uh, quick insert here. I was inside Boscov's the other day, and it was during the Multicultural Parade. And I parked at Boscov's, so I was walking through, and uh, I'm going out the front door, and there was these two ladies walking in front of me, and the lady goes, don't they have anything better to do than just to block traffic all day? <laughs> like, like, walking out, and I'm like, that was, like, so... Like, that person, you know, that would, like, naturally think that would yeah. say that. <laughs> I love that shit. Their day's ruined. Yeah, it's right. just like, oh, God forbid, like, we're yeah, celebrating. anyone do anything else. Yeah, yeah. She's, it was just, like, so, like, typical. <laughs> like, like, every talk back 16 <laughs> Yeah, like, like, it was, like, exactly yeah. like that. Like, no one's ever going to be. why are they blocking the street? Yeah, but, I mean, what now, Jesus, Mary People and Joseph. Yeah, it's like, no one's ever, there's always going to be somebody that's, like, I have I have Not very mixed it. feelings about the whole Talk Back 16 thing in general. <laughs> it's my favorite show. It is awesome. <laughs> like, like everybody loves indulging in it, and then at the same time, you're like, you're just giving a voice to this like insane minority that just kind of. I mean, and maybe they maybe they are more of a majority than we think. I don't know. But it just <laughs> seems it just seems like it's this niche crowd. It's like the same 20 people that keep. I think it is by. like the same people. Like, you know, just more often who than like not. to hear themselves talk, who think that they're important because they got on. You they want to the get. They, it's like, like they that. live to get featured. Yeah, it's it's they're like old fashioned internet trolls. Like they, yeah, they they're like yeah, they the haven't OG like made yeah. that hurdle. <laughs> Yeah, they've never down. They don't know what an app is. They're still using you know, like the don't. rotary phone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Which means they really mean it. Yeah. it. It takes some time yeah, to really <laughs> call one of the. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, you know, more, more power to them, I guess. But I, I just, I just don't get the point of giving those kind of people a microphone. My favorite or, is the you know, emotional megaphone. people, like that. Like you could really tell that they're pissed and like, <laughs> like upset. Yeah. <laughs> like you could hear like the distress in their voice. They're like, I mean, what are you thinking? Like those people. Right. That's my favorite. <laughs> like as if someone's gonna answer them on the other line. Right. Or they're arguing with somebody. <laughs> it's so they can go, Sally. I was on N O W N E P today. <laughs> yeah. They'll never guess. They put me on the air. <laughs> but I, I give I give the reporters credit because uh, they'll they'll shoot right back at them. They do. They and are. I've never seen anybody like blatantly shit on their own audience <laughs> yeah, and then do. just go right back into it like they nothing do. ever happened like they just blatantly like you're all stupid fucks <laughs> yeah. we can't say that but we are saying that and then they just go right back they do like doing. they retaliate a little bit yeah. it's like great like every couple weeks they'll do like a, a little a whole, retaliation oh, they'll do yeah. like whole did you ever like see like the videos that they do they do whole segments where they like <laughs> compile them right and then like do these then, like yeah, snarky were, like comments right. back but i feel like when i was like watching the news as a child like I, that like never like happened i feel like that's only been a thing in the last 10 to 15 years where they started doing that i feel yeah. like it was like a lot more serious and then i don't know what happened there's but. like a right. whole like slew of videos of some guy from scranton the county council meetings did you ever see those mm -hmm. yes i know exactly who yeah I, I remember <laughs> looking up w talk back and finding these videos of this guy in yeah. all the county council meetings i don't know if that's still a thing or not but yeah, it's they're not. It was as, like I thought I was finding like obscure, like viral, cool stuff. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if people are are cutting them out like they used to. They used yeah. to like take you know parts of the broadcast and put them on there. But all the things now, uh, they they finally start uploading everything to YouTube, so you can watch the whole meetings and stuff on there. Now. Yeah. 
from the the city the county and all that kind of stuff so you know if you want to you can skip around long enough you'll you'll find something yeah. what, what a job with what with mental anguish for yes. them to like, <laughs> yes. and for no strategic answers either but like yeah right <laughs> like man i would hate to be one of those people sometimes <laughs> so um the uh, we also we also want to talk about some of the other events you do. One of the things that I think is interesting that I, I think is like a common thread, even though a lot of these events are, are different from each other, they're all kind of uh, they they kind of fill a void or they they speak to a certain niche, uh, you know, a, a certain type type of person that's maybe outside of the typical family events that you see all the time or, the, or that kind of stuff. Is is that is it more or less just like I'm into this, and I want to see something like this happen. Or um, no, not necessarily. Especially like even when it comes to um, the zine I do, like I, there's no right. specific genre. Like it's mm -hmm. just like you want to be covered, then I'll, I'll cover you. And like that's something that you you do too. That like I look up to you for, you know. Um, and I think that's great to just basically promote anybody that's willing to try to do anything creative in the area. I know that's really vague, but <laughs> around right. here it's specific, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, as far as like the types of events yeah. that I do, um, I just uh, want to give people a voice and a platform and I'm kind of like willing to also work with people when they're just like, hey, I have this idea for something that I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll make that thing happen. Or like the worst thing you could tell me is like, we don't have a this. And I'm like, I have to work to make this happen. <laughs> There's nothing going to stop me. You know, it's just, it's a bad thing to tell me. Um, I think I lost track of the question. <laughs> Well, I don't like even the, know if I answered it. Like the Zine Fest, that is that's something that's interested you for a long time. Okay, well, like I guess in that case, um, it was that was something that um, I went to the Philly Zine Fest and was like kind of inspired to put it on in Scranton because uh, I felt as though we had an art scene, but maybe that was an unexplored territory for some people, mm -hmm. but that people could easily get into. Right. Um, and just kind of expose the area to something like slightly different, but familiar at the same time because we have so many kinds of art festivals and things like that. Sure. Um, and so I thought when I brought it here that it, it would make a big impact. It was like it was like a slow thing to get people to understand what it was, but it, it was right. also kind of something that, you know, not only was for artists but for writers, and it, it brought those two groups together, which I think is slightly unique for the area. I guess the, the last time that I remember something like that was like the pages and pa pages and yeah, yeah, that was that was a really cool event. Yeah. I was sad to see that go. Yeah. Especially that they got Christopher Hitchens. I know. It's like the number one thing like I, that I remember. Was, you know, that it blew my mind because uh, here you have this, you know, world-renowned author and thinker, like just uh, a guy I completely admire in so many ways. And I go downtown and I'm thinking, oh, I got to get there early. And there's barely anybody there. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Like, how how is it that you get these events? I think it was well-publicized. I, I can't think of a local media outlet that didn't cover it in some form or another or talk about it or whatever and then there there it is and uh and there's there's barely anybody i mean his his talk did well like when when you know he did the the q a later you know that was pretty packed but oh, that was, was like totally full you know but that was the the shopland hall like mm -hmm. i mean it could have it should have been the theater and that should have been packed, you know what I mean? Like, there should have been way more people and stuff like that. Is that, is that ever a frustration for you? Like, it, putting on an event and trying to get people to come and putting all this effort into it? Is well, that... yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the things that I have have weird names. <laughs> so people are very <laughs> like, what's that? Like, yeah. my, my side of it is like, I'm hoping this intrigues you enough so you think it's that weird that you do come out. Right, right. But um, I try to have, like, a little descriptor. So, like, even for, like, the zine fest, I'm like, and art and literature festival. So you're like, <laughs> oh, I get what's going on. It's not a zine, you know? Right, um, right. But um, also, to what you were saying before, I was going to say that um, I try to make most of my events as, as much as possible all ages and free. Right. Because when I was growing up here, that was, like, super important to me that there were things available. Like, mm -hmm. when I was, like, underage, my band was able to play a test pattern or, like, Phoenix Cuts and, like, places like yeah, that. And yeah. the vintage and stuff like that. And um, that was, like, super important to me to be able to be exposed to even get into somewhere. And I think that, like, sh shapes a lot of young people's lives around here. 
um, that want to be in a band or want to be exposed to playing mm -hmm. an instrument and I always wish that there's more of that that's the best thing to me that can come out of here for people to make more art or make more music <laughs> yeah how, how did you choose uh, some of the bands that would be playing this this event coming up? Other than obviously the genre, you know, like it was there. Did you listen to a lot of stuff and figure out like this is the kind of stuff that I want to hear? Or? I did. Um, well, I thought of a few bands off of the top of my head, um, especially with uh, like uh, Jamie Callie like when she does all of her stuff. But she did, she well now they did Signs and Wonders, but. Um, Callie Raw when she does that band um, and sure. Mind Choir and a few other bands that um, incorporate psychedelic music into their music but are slightly heavier. Mm. Um, but also I, I did a lot of listening outside of the area did like for the surrounding areas I was like on Bandcamp and like all different you know places where they put up music and trying to see if I can get some other bands so like uh, the one band The Mysteries is coming in from Philadelphia. Mm. And they were excited to be on the show too, so I'm excited to hear them. So they seem they seem like they're like more like the tr traditional psychedelic route. So. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I was trying to listen to all different bands and message them, and whoever got to me first, basically, were the ones that made it. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, a good like way to do next it. year you'll have the opposite effect of people reaching out right. to you, and you'll be able to kind of filter through. Right. That's the dream. <laughs> Is this something that you want to turn into an annual event, or? I was just assuming. Yeah, you know. I mean, I, I, I hope so. It's just um, like things are starting to add up. Like uh, <laughs> I, then I thought of this like crazy idea that I would um, put on a zine fest in Ithaca, New York, out yeah. of nowhere. Um, so I'm going to be doing that later on this year. So I'm just like, wow, the list is getting like longer and longer. I wish I was like paid for this, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not. People don't realize like how much time like those emails and those negotiating and going back and forth and like that. Mm -hmm. So that takes up a lot of time, you know, and it's not, I, wanna, I don't want to say exhausting because you know that you're kind of like getting to a, a goal. It, it is, like it is. It's, and, it's meant to be exhausting. Yeah. I mean, I was lucky enough to have like a bunch of my friends are always there to, to help me. Uh, like if I need equipment for something or if like I need you to like make social media posts or anything like that, like I know that they're like more than willing to help me or just like set tables up, all that kind of stuff. Like sure. I couldn't do it alone. Um, I, m I might take the first steps, but they're like always there if I need them, so. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So what keeps you going? <clears throat> I mean, you just said you don't get paid and it's time consuming and stressful and what, why? It's literally one of the only things that like brings me joy. I know that's like really cheesy, but it's so true. <laughs> it's fine. It really is. Like, um, like, for example, like, like my main profession is graphic design. Like it's something that I know that I can, I can do, but, um, like this to me is like so much more fulfilling. So I try to incorporate that aspect of what I can do and, and use it for this kind of thing because I just you know I can't I really honestly I guess I can't stand it when people are bored but it's not so much that I want to just like specifically like want to entertain them with like you know shiny lights and glitter and stuff like that but it's more like kind of making that like domino effect and <clears throat> making that chain and not only seeing me and knowing that they can do things too and that's something that I hope that people do but also mm -hmm. like when they you know see bands playing or they see like any of those kind of things making a zine stuff like that you know um i used to like when i first started the zine fest even for example like when anthology, anthology bookstore was there like mm -hmm. there was a bunch of zines in there that were local and i was like yeah. yes that's what this is about you're supposed <laughs> to be doing this like yeah. and it's kind of to give people like not only like uh the venues and events as outlets but even just what the content of those ven of those events are right. so if it's making a zine like you know make a zine like if you want to make a band make a band you know like doing all those things uh, I think is just so important to foster creativity onto yourself but it's it's showing people in the area that you know you don't have to be that bored you know <laughs> if <laughs> you're or you're bored if you're you're boring if you're bored you know like yeah there's other things that you could do a little Harvey Danger huh? yeah that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> So underrated. Wonder, wonder. 
It's it's funny because uh, you know a lot of people think they they are one hit wonders, which by technical definition I guess they are. But they had like two more albums after that, which were exactly. amazing, mm-hmm. really really good stuff. And I, I got to see them a few times before they broke up. But uh, yeah, so you wanna we'll, we'll pop open yeah, another I'm thirsty, one. Dude. Yeah, thirsty dude. Yeah, this was good. All right, let's try. I don't know. I didn't realize I had a chug. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do here. We chug oh. beer. <laughs> Ooh. So this, this one, is your, your oh, it's blueberry belch. This is blueberry kind of like belch. A... All right. Bailey's and Allen. Let's see if this uh, something will make us belch. A little zing. <laughs> Should we? Should we make a point too? I've never, I never learned how to do that. What? Belch on command. Why would you want to? I don't know. Belch on command. I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I've seen people do it. Why would you want to? I don't while, know. while we're you're a lady. While I know. we're doing that, let's uh, let's uh, read some comments. Uh, Nate Williams says that uh, he wants to come and uh, shoot the shit and drink with us. Well, oh, I'm I'm, I'm sure really we can, we can arrange us. that. We can, we can have you on. Uh, he also said during the conversation oh, that uh, he wants to do the, the same thing that you're doing for local hip hop, <laughs> which I think that is a, a niche that needs to be uh, filled, you know, uh, filled a little bit better. You, know, okay. uh, you don't you don't see enough. Which of, one is of this? Around here. The belching. The blueberry oh, belch. that's right. Of course. Blueberry belch. That's right. It smells really good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this one's definitely distinctly different from the other one. It has more of a fermented sort of taste to it. Sure. Um, not it's almost it's, like a cream, like a caramel cream yeah. taste to it, right? Yeah, that's your, your yeah. I was trying to like think of. I couldn't think of like I was thinking it, like yeah. of a butterscotch like candy, mm-hmm. right? It's so but weird blueberry. because the blueberry, blueberry was like so pungent in the first one. Yeah. That now I'm just like maybe I should have drank water before I drank this or right, something. Right. Yeah. Cleanse the palate. Cleanse it's almost palate. yeah. It's it's uh, it tastes almost muted a little bit. In this mm-hmm. Yeah. Not it's good it's, though. Yeah, it's good. But the carbonation isn't as much as the last one, I think. Right. To me. But it's got a good blueberry flavor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's there. You just have to kind of wait for it. But yeah, oh, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's uh, it's only a four point two, I think. Oh, so good. It's pretty pretty light. Uh, <laughs> uh, Shelly asks, uh, "What's wrong with hula hoops?" <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I'll tell you what. I can hula hoop like nobody's business. I, I'm a terrible at it. <laughs> Bring a hula hoop in. I'll hula hoop. <laughs> okay. Nothing's I'm going to do that no, just so no, you know. No, I will. Because I have Make like sure a it's good, home. though, because there's those ones that, like, they're real light. The ones you buy from, like, a dollar store or whatever. They have to yeah. be those solid ones. I'll hula hoop for at least five minutes. When I try to hula hoop, I actually, like, end up leaving the room. Because, like, I, like, I don't know. I just do this, like, back shuffle thing, and I, like, leave. <laughs> like, I can't help it. Just don't do it near any of the equipment. Yeah. And the beer. And the beer. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not. I think hula hooping is awesome. <laughs> So there's not a, not a criticism. Yes. You're so, going to prove it so next f- week. Is so drink and hula hoop at the same time? Uh, yes, yeah, so you have to chug a beer and hula hoop and see which one you can finish first. Or like, which which stops first. I can't do it at the same time. I need to focus. Focus. <laughs> Ted Hebert says, uh, Scranton needs a uh, Leslie Nope. I don't know who that is. Oh, she's from Parks and Rec. Oh, okay. She's like... Yeah, I don't, I don't is know. that the one... The it's Amy Poehler. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. She's like... I love her. She's my like friend Alicia always tells town. me that that's me. Yeah, I've gotten that, too. <laughs> really? I love her. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, like, she's very like, well, we're going to save this town, and we're going to go do it, and we're going to go do it right now. <laughs> like, she's like like all like... She's this little, little town. She's awesome. Okay. She's like a, a more pure Sarah Palin. Mm. And Canadian. funnier, I guess. Canadian? <laughs> And uh, uh, Kenny Hill says, uh, Jess, you're awesome. Oh, thank you, Kenny. <laughs> and uh, Chelsea Taylor says, uh, what's up, get it, girl? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Brittany Boot, too. Hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I love that girl. <laughs> If you have any, uh, if you have any uh, questions or anything, uh, uh, please please throw them in. I want to talk about the uh, the girls' night open mic because that started up again, right? Yeah, the next one's going to be um, uh, September fifteenth, but uh, we just had one uh, like two, a week ago or two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh, that was a little surprise at the end there. Oh yes! Uh, congrats, <laughs> Katie. Puzzle, right? I saw Ted. the picture. Yeah, yeah. We we, we I like we knew about it halfway through, and it was so funny because like. <laughs> I don't know, I was like in a, um, 
I was going to rap at the end because it's a newfound talent, I guess. But then mm. I was like, well, that would have been really awkward. Like, <laughs> but like, a great proposal time to rap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, like, I was like, no, you guys get the spotlight. And then... To be fair, Nate might disagree with you. I don't think there's a bad time for... You have more practice now for the 15th. Oh, yeah. Open right. up with the rap. Yeah. I might Absolutely. be able to. <laughs> but I, I like, uh, Katie came and told me that she... Well, actually, I wasn't really clear at first what she was saying, because, like, yes. she came up to me and she was, like, holding a dashboard confessional ticket. Yeah. And, um... She, I Which thought she, she won on the podcast. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I thought she was just saying like, "Oh, can I bring Ted up here?" To, like, because some people brought their boyfriends up to like play like guitar or something in the background or whatever. And I, at first, I was like, yeah, "Yeah, sure, whatever." And then she's just like, "No, I'm going to propose to him." And I was like, <laughs> "What?" <laughs> I just like did a double take. <laughs> and then I, I feel like I did that whole like Seinfeld thing where she's just like, no! and she keeps like hitting people like, shut up, I can't believe you're doing that, like, shut up! <laughs> and then I was just like, wow, I have to pretend I don't know what's going on, but then... Right. Um, was he super surprised? Oh my god, Ted looked like a little teddy bear. <laughs> he was just like, he was just like, oh my god, I can't believe this is happening to me. <laughs> Did, was it filmed? Rare. Was it on yeah. video? Yeah, yeah. It, it, is, it is on video. You can see it on her Facebook page. Because uh, she told me right beforehand that That's she was awesome. going to do it. So I was like, all right, somebody's got somebody's to be the, the guy who gets this on tape. So. You made it happen. You set the whole thing up. Yeah, that's that's true. That uh, um, Katie and Ted uh, met at uh, NEPA scene open mic uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, so uh, and they also, uh, and which which Katie has has now mentioned in the comments, uh, that uh, she wants me to marry them. to a fifty. Yeah, yeah. So now you're ordained. So I get well. I gotta get. I gotta get ordained, <laughs> which I think I'm gonna do. Uh, what you did? We talked about the Big Lebowski. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's the the Church of the Latter Day Dude. Yes. You can, <laughs> you can go online, get a little certificate. Uh, it's pretty pretty inexpensive. What a fun story. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So yeah, wish you guys the best. Circle. But if it fails, it's his fault. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so this whole thing is riding on me. So <laughs> Uh, apparently it's June eighth, so I don't know. I don't know where where they're gonna have it, but uh, or who's gonna be invited. But uh, I, I I guess I'm I'm gonna be uh, videotaping it and officiating. I don't I don't know what I'm gonna be doing, but uh, it should that's be, it should why be the selfie stick was invented, right? <laughs> For that's <weddings>. true. <laughs> but the 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 interesting thing about the the girls' night open mic is that it's all female performers, and it seems like it fills up really quick. Which I think shows just how many female performers there are in the area. Are they were they uh, looking for something like this? Was this something that they they really needed? I mean, I guess so. I like my hope is always that like they just go on to like actually go to your open mic. Or <laughs> you did. Like that was like always my hope. I was just like because I never understood like like why it wasn't like balanced you know more and and not yeah, and like right. and it's not like sure. you had anything to do with it it was just kind of like no. people just signed up and like yeah i'm always just like why aren't they like getting up there and i had no idea why but like i don't know i think i think in the same way that somebody would want something to be like a boys club they want it to be like a girls club and i think it's just right. kind of like a like a familiar like let's hang out type of thing mm -hmm. i don't necessarily I don't know, and like I guess maybe it's just some more like a call to action to get them to come up and right and stuff. But like it's always my hope that like they just go out to like you know regular open mics and just do their thing. Right, just get out there, build up more. a yeah. confidence level. Sure, yeah, in, a, in an environment that they're comfortable in. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of like getting people to perform is just giving them an atmosphere to be comfortable, and we say that like all the time. And you're saying like a platform for people to. It's just providing that for them, and then they just will build up the confidence and go with it. Sure. Absolutely. You know? That's the whole name of the game, I think, uh, when it comes to everything that you're doing. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm, like, floored every time I see all those girls perform. I really am. Like, they have, like, such, good crowd, such talent. Too. Yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. Like, um, and they're all, like, so distinct, too. Like... Um, whenever like Amanda Rogan plays or, or, um, or Rachel Little Star Run when she when they play it's amazing mm -hmm. or Londa when like like their voices are incredible like right they should like you know be out there playing like a ton of festivals and stuff I think <laughs> anyways right um, they're just like all of them are just like amazing people amazing talents and they should go to as many things as possible I think 
Yeah, I, I think there's this level of, you know, your general person thinks local, they think amateur, they think open mic, they think amateur. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think people see that as a negative, like, oh, well, they're not there yet. You know, I'll catch them when they're, you know, when they're on a big, you know, big stage and I got to pay 50 bucks for a ticket. Yeah. Why? Why wait that long? Yeah. I don't understand. I think they're like diamonds in the rough. They're like right. hidden gems. They have to go out and see, and like not just there, just like anywhere. Like I don't think I, I feel like, like whenever I I grew up in kind of like a hair metal family, <laughs> and I when I hear stories about my parents, they're just like, yeah, we just went to autographs, or we went to CCs, or we went to whatever. Like you know, they yeah. didn't care who was there. They didn't wait for like a headliner. They're just like a band is playing, let's go. And right, so I just like right. went with that mentality. That's like it doesn't necessarily matter if they're like locally famous or something. It's just mm -hmm. like are they willing to put their talents out there or did they work on something then sure. go support them like yeah what else are you doing <laughs> I mean, you know yeah, there's not as much of that attitude now I, I see it in certain places like the keys is a good example and not just because they advertise with us but just that was one of the reasons i wanted to work with them is because you you have a steady crowd there that goes there all the time no matter what the genre is no matter who's playing no matter what's going on and they're all really into it and very accepting of it, you know. And you don't see a lot of that anymore where people are just going to a place to see whatever is there. It has to be something specific that draws them. Like that's them. Their, yeah. the reason they're going. Right, mm -hmm. right, exactly. And that, I don't know if that's the right built attitude. Built-in crowds. Like, they don't really see necessarily built-in crowds anymore. I guess maybe sometimes right. you do more so maybe in Scranton. I don't really see that a lot around here. Yeah. Like the Jazz Cafe, for example, like whatever band is playing, that's the crowd that goes there. Sure, yeah, that, that, that's that's probably another good, a good a local example. Yeah. You know, you see, there's a general crowd that goes there pretty much no matter what's playing there on a Friday or Saturday. Yeah. You know, they're going to enjoy it because it's in the same sort of vein. Yeah. Or, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, well, apparently I have to dress like Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'm totally <laughs> cool with that. Uh, <laughs> Shelly says, uh, white Russians for all and then bowling. So that's that, I think that's a good that's a good wedding plan. It's a great idea. <laughs> uh, Kenny uh, says, uh, Fallon is watching you, Jess, and just did a weird salute of some sort. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll <laughs> salute to Fallon. <laughs> uh, Shelly asks if you could please take over the marketplace, quote-unquote, at Steamtown and make something happen there. <laughs> I worked in the mall at Hot Topic for five years. <laughs> That was your contribution. That was my contribution. <laughs> and then it turned into like weird leased shops and stuff. Yeah. You almost I, wanna see I didn't mean to interrupt no, you, but you, you almost wanna see the mall kind of kind of take a second like a back seat to mm -hmm. just boutiques opening up and shops and like local places opening right. up or the mall filling up with like little shops. Well, the, I did see they to to be fair to them, they, I did see pictures the other day that they posted on their Facebook of the way that everything's coming along upstairs like in the food court area where it used to be mm -hmm. uh they're like redoing the whole thing to to put in all these little you know uh like a marketplace with uh you know uh, fresh food and things like yeah. that as well as vendors and things and it, it looks great i mean it's, it's i think it's just taking too long for people people are very impatient about the whole thing i actually thought that um when i when i did like the first ted TEDx talk that I was doing and I had Michelle Dempsey and like it was like all about architecture and she was yeah she did like that what if project you know yeah, yeah, she talked really about cool. the mall and and how like that type of model of a building is so outdated and quite frankly a little dark when you go into sure <laughs> the parking garage and things like that but right. um and just the idea that people like outdoor shops more, you yeah. know, just like yeah. seeing the storefronts on a sidewalk and versus like going into like this giant building type of thing. And um, I mean, I don't know what the future holds for that place, but I've, I feel like even since I've worked there many moons ago <laughs> that I think that um, it just need. I, I think we're kind of like they're beating a dead horse at this point. It's right. just like they're like, what if we try this? What if we try this? And I'm just like, just make it a giant park now. <laughs> just you know, right. do something different because I think that it's just they're trying too hard to like. It's hard to tell what's gonna work. Yeah. Isn't it crazy that how things change? Yeah. Like, yeah, just when within, growing up, within like, our lifetimes. Our there was mall, movie theaters and malls. There was like you did, that was a big day out. Now right. it's yeah. like Amazon. Our mall had two movie <laughs> theaters. Right. 
What's that? Our mall had two theaters. Yeah. Our yeah. mall is still pretty busy and happening and like new yeah. stores coming in. Like we just got H and M. That's a big win. Yeah. yeah. See, the Steamtown was supposed to get an H and M, or so there was rumors about it. Sure. A long time ago. They might have looked at like the. They might have looked at both the the Steamtown Mall and the Wyoming Valley Mall and were kind of like. And then you, had, you had the, the, yeah. the shops at Montage. They were supposed to be more of like an outlet kind of thing. Yeah. I think that's what people were expecting. And then it was just regular stores, and people were like, well, I thought it was going to be like this I kind of I think it didn't yeah. work because it was like really overly pricey stores. Yeah. And like, I don't yeah. know. Maybe I'm just speaking from like my from your broke <laughs> <laughs> point of view, but yeah. um, that's kind of like what I wonder about like all the other the shops that have been downtown for like bajillions of years. I'm just like, yeah. I walk in there and like a sweater's like three hundred dollars, and I'm like, dude, <laughs> who's buying this? I'm we like, have those here, but they're not like in town. Yeah, I don't know who affords that, but I can. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the stuff you buy in return. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before you even wear My jacket it. for like the Steamtown Music Awards last year, I remember. <laughs> I, it was like a leather jacket. I w- it was like a leather jacket with like these cool flaps and it was like suede inside. It was like $350. And I was like, I'm going to take this back. <laughs> this is a really ridiculous purchase. Uh, and I, I took it back and it went through a lot that night. <laughs> I'm going to put your pictures up in the mall. <laughs> yeah. Beware of this woman. <laughs> I don't do it often, but. <laughs> I definitely do do it. when you do it. (laughs) At Express now, they must have caught on to me because I did it so much at Express. Like, that was the store I always did it at. And now they have this tag on the outside that says, if this tag is removed, like, you cannot return this. So they, like, (sighs) totally got it all figured out. But other stores, you can still get away with it. It's like your own rent the runway uh, (laughs) sort of thing. It's just, like, my own way of doing it. Do you guys watch King of Queens? We were just talking about that show today. There's there's an episode where it's devoted to she does this. Oh, okay. I was literally just saying to my boyfriend that I was like, you're like, I said Kevin Hart because I screwed up his name. And he's like, what? He's like, you're (laughs) nothing like Kevin Hart. Uh, And he's like, I was like, you're like Kevin James. And I'm like, I'm like Liam Ramini. I was like just saying this to him like (laughs) earlier. I watched it every night before. Is that what she does? Yeah, she's got a whole like room (laughs) dedicated to like. Like clothes and it has dates that when when they need to be back. Back, yeah. And she gets him involved. Like these shoes need to be, need to be back by like you know noon today. And he's like, I'm not getting involved with your shit. Like, but he does, and it's, it's funny. Yeah, that's so weird that you say that because I literally just said that earlier today about that show. I was like, you just don't drive for UPS. <laughs> so uh, if you ever need a dress for something, that's the way to do it. All right. Back to important I'll stuff. I'll work on that. <laughs> oh yes, you want you want to open the Sea Dog? You have to. All right. Yeah, that's my favorite let's, one. Let's do it. Yeah. Sea Dog this is one, great stuff. This one, uh, I think we've all had before, right? Yes, I have. I love you, that. Yeah, that's like the foggier one, right? Is that what I'm thinking of? No, mm. I don't think so. Maybe I'm thinking think of something so. else. But dogfish head. I think this looks I'm this looks of. like the the Crowley uh, lettering. You know, like um, yeah, the occult, the occult dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Al- Alexander has Crowley. It. I wonder if that's a. That's what I thought like it was. Like a little play on that. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought it was. Yeah, I didn't think of that. Get that, that get that shot. You get can, that al- you can already action. smell the blueberry <laughs> coming <laughs> off of this. Already, like that's ridiculous. We're now but they also field. have an apricot or apricot, however the fuck you want to say it. <laughs> I like apricot. I feel like I said that like two weeks ago. But uh, they have a a sunfish, which is really good. It's like a grapefruit and uh, peaches. Hmm. That's my favorite one. Holy. That's that's a good. uh, Oh boy. Drink it. That's a good uh, by the pool. (laughs) Taste (laughs) good. Got your back. (laughs) I have to like readjust in this dress. I just don't want to like inappropriately Mm. reach for this beer. It's not much. That is pretty solid. It's got the. It's really sudsy. Yeah, I wish I could have gone there when I was in Maine. Mm. It's so blueberry. It's good. Mm-hmm. All their beers is, is a great poolside summertime. That's to me, anyways. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Paint a picture for us. <laughs> Crushing beer is poolside. Yeah, you all got about it. I just heard a, a term today called darty. 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 Never heard it. Yeah. It's on a pardon my take. Those guys are fucking hilarious. But uh, I guess it's partying 
during the day between like noon and 6 p.m. Hmm. Particularly on a Saturday or Sunday, I think. Or okay. maybe just a Saturday. I Party. Darty. Darty. I don't know why. I was thinking like party with a D. Yeah, I don't know. Darty. <laughs> look it up again. You guys will be darty on Saturday. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is there anything else we want to talk about in terms of uh, the show? and uh, you know, So why, who's playing? Why people should go? Yeah, why should... Why, you said uh, the three. Is that... So, <laughs> that's why I wanted to bring the flyer in so I could remember. Yeah, but I like, actually have... Flat. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll the mysteries was the from mysteries Philly. is from Philly. There's peace of mind. Wall away. Um, Earth mouth is playing. Um, <laughs> High noon, which is like um, members from the hill you you die on. Yeah, I was wondering about that one. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a cool name. Which guys? It's um, Mike Lloyd and uh, Ian Anderson. Okay. Um, and then I think you got it. Mind choir. Mind My choir. Yeah. Right. Uh, Signs and Wonders. I was going to say Jamie, yeah. one of Jamie's projects. Am I forgetting someone? I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. <laughs> no, I think that's everybody. That sounds fun. Yeah, what can people expect? Um, I What I'm hoping, that people would just, like, kind of put, like, a, a blanket down and go get some, just like, chill out. pizza across the street and bring it over. <laughs> yeah. And chill and watch the uh, music. There's going to be some artists there, I think. Um... I know Amanda Rogan, who plays at Girls' Night sometimes, she's going to have some of her work there. Okay. Um, I think she does some, like, large-scale paintings. So some of that stuff is going to be there. Um, but I think, like, mostly the focus is going to be the music. And um, it's going to be from, like, about 2 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Mm. So should be a good time. Just, like, you know, something to do when you're walking by. So it's like a come in, come out kind of thing, you know, like don't have to stay the whole time if you don't feel like it. And sure. it's free? And it's so free. Hello. Awesome. You can come down you and totally hope if you want to be like the intermission or something. <laughs> I just like it's picture you one. like yeah. hula hooping like in the middle of the kidding. event. I'm not even joking. <laughs> like chugging a beer and hula hooping and like just partying. I can't do that. I can't. I don't, that, I don't think I can do that. But not that coordinated. No. no. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I need Darting. a good hula hoop, though. Like It's got to be like that nice weighted hula hoop. <laughs> I bet there'll be one there. There probably won't be. Let me borrow it. I, I mean, you know, there might, I mean, uh, maybe some people who are going up to Peach Fest are going to get lost yeah. and then come over. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't say it. that. Because people... <laughs> <laughs> get hit by a car and right well, yeah, I mean, there's a guy like from Bisco things. who got lost in a mud bog somewhere <laughs> yeah. like, so. that's a great story though. Yeah, it, it is a great story <laughs> how is Camp Bisco I don't know man I got so fucked up I didn't make it. Then, there I was got lost in a mud bog it wasn't as publicized but there was one this year where some guy got lost and then he told the cops after the after he was found I was sleeping that was that was his big like like oh, everybody's looking yeah. for him. They're posting his picture asleep. on Facebook like, oh my god, this guy's missing. Where's is, where is he gone? Oh, I was sleeping. It's <laughs> awesome. Where That's I crazy. don't know. I don't know if he was sleeping there or you know he just in the mud in his car. I didn't know he was in the mud. I, I don't know. I don't know. He was darting. <laughs> Darty. Well, it's, it's also specific to a patio. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you gotta be. On. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, active drinking on the patio between the hours of noon that and 6 p.m. That was important PM. information to share. Yeah. <laughs> that, like, yeah. go, that's how, that's like goes on at my house every weekend, Oh my dad's house. <laughs> they darty all Saturday. That's all I got. Getting darty. All right, so uh, we'll, we'll wrap up. Uh, thank you for, for uh, uh, reminding me. We, uh, we should ca- if, if you want to cast your vote uh, for our podcast, our website, for... Uh, Brittany here for Best Photographer in the Steamtown Music Awards. The link is in the comments. So if you enjoy the show and you, you like what we do, uh, you know, please give us a vote. You know, we really appreciate it. And I wanted to, to wrap up today uh, with the, la- the last word on uh, the Multicultural Parade. You brought it up uh, oh, yeah. before. And I didn't really hear much about it before it happened, so I couldn't go. But uh, you went? I did. What, um... was, it, what was it like? It, well, my first uh, experience was that lady in Bosco was like saying, Jesus, <laughs> yeah. Mary and Joseph, they haven't got anything better to do to block traffic. Right. After that, it was awesome. <laughs> it was good. Um, it was cool. Like, there was uh, Mayan, like, the Mayan community, and they were all dressed up, and it was really cool. 
uh, the Jamaican girls were in these crazy outfits. That was really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, the Mexican had all their crazy outfits, and they were like doing all these like traditional Mexican dances. Um, food was awesome. I had potato pancakes and uh, pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Way to expand your horizons. <laughs> I wanted to get the jerk chicken because I love the I love the guy that, that has the uh, and the Jamaican truck. It's my favorite. And <laughs> yeah, I know, but like the line was so long, and I was like, oh, I don't have the patience oh for that right now. So I got a potato yeah. pancake. But uh, it was cool. Like they had, they had. Uh, There's never a bad time. <laughs> the most, I know. Like I went the to the remote. multicultural festival. I got a potato pancake, a piece of pizza. <laughs> but I, this it's all just, the culture I need. For, like that's right. good stuff too. But all of the real good stuff, like the real ethnic food, uh, the lines were so long, and I was like, like taking pictures. I was running around. So. That's good though. That's cool out there. You know. People it was are, cool. Yeah. Um, I saw a couple people I know. They're out. Like they were taking pictures. There's a lot of cameras there. Yeah. Um. Patty, who is the events coordinator for the city, she was like running around doing her thing, organizing. Uh, she had a lot of help, you know. She was telling me, yeah. but uh, just making sure everything was going smoothly. So it was like the parade. It went right to the square, and then there was like all the vendors on the square. They had recitals, uh, the uh, dance recitals, mm -hmm. and just it was actually a really good turnout, um, and it was really cool. It was cool. Because you know, if, if you. Uh if you, you live on the, the, the comment sections of the news sites... Was, I didn't even want to read like, them. It was purely the opposite of that. I like, didn't want to read is them. A, this is the apocalypse. They yeah. ruined this town. I, like, I wanted Everybody's to, like... Everybody's come from out of the area and I was, like, posting pictures. I wanted to post the pictures. I took pictures of, like, these, like, little Mexican girls dancing. And, <laughs> like, I just want to be like, look how scary downtown yeah. Wilkes-Barre is, you know? Right. Like... And that's the thing is is everybody talks about that, but then you see events like that, and it's like everybody's gray, everybody's having a good time. Yeah, like no one. Smiles. It's not like people think you get There's off no the bus issues. on the square and just get like stabbed. Like, <laughs> like you're just like, oh, we're we got another one. There. They're yeah. unloading another bus here. That's like, initiation boom. Into yeah, yeah, like that's what people like literally <laughs> think that. Yep. We were like the the crazy shit going down on Wilkes Barre page like has just been like off the chain lately, with not in a good way, with just like horse. Did I just make? Did I? I just said that. You just said off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love that. 1999 is calling. Yeah, like, hey. But it's been, like, insane lately with, like, all these people, like, and they're, like, hateful shit, you know? And you yeah. just, like, th sit back and I, I have a hard time, like, not, like, I want to, like, I don't want to say anything. And then I just want to, like, rip these people apart and, like, totally dissect everything that they're saying. But then you just become a part of, like, the more, like, bullshit. Right. But um, when you see, like, the hateful shit and you just think, like, wow, like, people like that actually exist and that's real. And, right. like, they're not kidding. <laughs> right. You know? Those, you like, I did, like, indulge one person and I was like, you're actually the scariest thing, you know, <laughs> like, in this area. Like, people like you. Like, yeah. everyone's coming together. We're at a time that our community is uniting. Of course, there's going to be crime. There's crime everywhere. Uh there's violence that some there's things that it's all over the globe you know there's things that that are inevitable and there's bad people out there but i feel like our community is at a point where we're really coming together and uniting and that cultural parade was just an example of that and kind of there, there's just people those people that are thinking otherwise they're the ones why don't you get the fuck out you know like <laughs> right. we'd rather you leave than like these people or you know these people that came here for a better life mm -hmm. you know but then again there's also two sides to it there's people that came here to to commit crimes specifically, right. you know, that saw an opportunity here to sell drugs, to make money off, you know, people's addictions or whatever. So there is two realities to it, um, but it's just understanding it and not judging everybody sure. by certain people's Painting actions. Painting with a broad brush, right. so right. to speak. So, I don't know. It's just, it's so crazy to read those comments and try to comprehend that those people exist and that they believe what they're saying sure. to be true, and uh, but I, I that's also, how they live their life. And I, but I think they live in such a, a, a bubble that it doesn't, you know, like it doesn't translate to the real world. You know, right. you see an event like that, and there's no issues. Everybody's having a good time. You know, everybody's supportive of it. Right. it it's it's like you can you, you know you can you know. Uh, tap away on your fucking keyboard all you want but at the right. end of the day you're not changing anything you're not making anything better you're not it's the people you know, that aren't involved at all yeah you know because they have no idea what they're talking about at that point right exactly these people didn't go outside and went oh yeah well i guess all of my expectations have been shattered right you know, everything that i just said is complete bullshit you yeah know? because they they want to 
uh, firm their own, you know, which is why they live in that bubble. You know, everybody can, you know, say, oh, yeah, you're right, and pats each other on the back. Like, <laughs> it's like oh, that yeah, South Park episode. You ever that South Park episode? You know? It's like, they're taking our germs. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. Yeah. There's always, like, that person on those threads, and there's always, like, but our taxpayer money, but our taxpayer <laughs> money. There's always, like, that guy. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just so mind-blowing. <laughs> but, uh, and I, I want to make sure I read a comment from uh, my, my cousin, Brendan Howells, who uh, yeah. lives in uh, Japan. Uh, he's, he's a teacher over there. He said, I want to drink with you guys right now, but it's 9 a.m. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have at it, dude. You know, he, yeah. was, he was in one of my Shower art beer. classes at Marywood. Actually. Yes, it's yeah, that's it's such a small world, isn't he, it? He uh, he drew me a little card of Zelda from Pet Cemetery, and I still have that because <laughs> I thought it was so cool that he took the time to do that. See, Brendan, your art your art lives on here. If if uh, people who who read our site regularly might know him from uh, the Drunk Illustration Tuesday podcast, which is a lot of fun, and you should go back and and listen to the previous episodes. Hopefully this will encourage Brendan to do more because I'm always pushing. Them. <laughs> I, like I think they're wink, great. Wink. I don't know more. if he thinks that they're as, as good. I, I really like them. I, I enjoy them and you know the art that he comes up with uh, to, to go with that. But uh, so yeah, that's that's uh, that's it for this week. Uh, thank you so much for uh, for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you uh, same time here uh, next week, uh, Wednesday, seven to eight p.m. I think uh, next week is Dower. Dower. Yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to that. That's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> I can't miss that. No. No. You, de- you, def- you definitely tell can't Tell Poppy miss to wear that. the frog suit. i got to figure it out. Oh, my gosh. I should, I, I should tell him to wear the frog suit. That would be awesome. <laughs> do the entire... And, and do yeah. it, like, straight. Like, just... In a frog suit, but do the interview straight. <laughs> he wouldn't be able to do it without, like, laughing, like, yeah. every time he talks. Yeah, like, do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, thank you, you so much. Have a good See night, guys. everybody. <laughs>